faith has been built. Uh, my name is Rebecca and I get the honor of speaking to you about excellence in character. So, I want to share a few quotes with you that really inspired me when it came to character. And actually, I kind of want to give a uh, very simple definition of character uh, because I need to, I'm someone that can overcomplicate things. I don't know if you can relate. I just need things simplified for me. Uh, what's character? It's what's typical of someone. It's what you would expect from that person. And sometimes we have characteristics that we're not very proud of, but I have good news for you. Our character can change. Yeah. Yeah. You are not stuck with the same character the rest of your life. This is the most liberating principle of our Christianity is that God gifts us repentance. Uh, so let me share a few quotes with you now that you know what character is. It says, be more concerned with your character than your reputation because your character is what you really are while your reputation is merely what others think you are. Jim Rohn, the person that wrote the book Good to Great, he says, character isn't something you are born with and can't change like your fingerprints. It's something you weren't born with and must take responsibility for forming. Our character is our responsibility. Character is something that shows up on stage, but it's made off stage. It's made in the mornings when no one sees you except your children. It's made in those unseen moments, the things that you do day in and day out when no one's asking you about it, no one's asking you to give accountability for, and no one sees you doing it. The Bible obviously talks about character. In Romans 5, 3 through 5, it says, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Cassidy spoke a lot about suffering today. And this is the pinnacle moment. This is what builds up to character. You don't get character without the suffering. It says, because we know that our suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame. What inspires me about the suffering and the character is it's book, end, book ended with rejoicing and hope. A lot of times we think, oh, I'm going to suffer. It's like we think that we're going to have to do a 10-day water fast. And then that's how we're going to get the character that we want and stuff. But it's like, no. Actually, that suffering... There is a great joy and liberation when we suffer. A great happiness from God is promised to us when we suffer. Um, so, suffering, uh, it's the word in the Greek, thlipsis. Thlipsis. <laughs> it's, um, it's pressure. The word means pressure. It says, especially internal pressure that hems someone in. The feeling that there is no way of escape. Wow, do you guys feel so inspired to endure that pressure to get the character? How is this glorious? How is it glorious to be hemmed in like there is no way of escaping? Wow. You're trapped, right? Because when you're hemmed in and you can't get out of your situation, that's when you have to decide. Am I going to forget everything and run? Come on. Or am I going to face it and rise? Come on. Come on. It's glorious and empowering when someone chooses to face the obstacle in front of them and they overcome. That's glorious. When they don't quit and they don't run from the challenges, that's an inspirational story. It's not an inspirational story when one, someone went through something hard and then they quit and then they became a victim about it the rest of their lives and always talk about how it was so hard and that's why they couldn't become the woman of God that they wanted to become. That's not inspiring, right? It's the person that was down and out that made a decision one day and they decided, I'm going to change. I'm not going to stay the same. That's what's inspiring. You know, this December I got an opportunity to grow in my character. Uh, if you don't know, my husband is Colby Gray, and he always does new things. He's all my life is an adventure. 
sure because we're always doing something new. Last December, and you know what? Okay, the other thing is about me. So I'm married to Colby. He's always changing, always growing. And me, I love comfort. And something I really love is Christmas. And every year, the last four years, I have found so much comfort in Christmas. So last year, he decided we're going to fast from all social media, all entertainment, all music, all movies. I was like, you're ruining Christmas. What are you doing? But it's actually what broke my stronghold from the idol of Christmas. This December, Colby came home and he was like, I have an idea. I'm going to start doing ice baths. And I was like, no. He's like, can I put on the balcony, babe? I'm like, no, that's such an eyesore. And I made it about it being an eyesore because I knew that if he started doing ice baths, I was going to have to do it next. (laughs) And I didn't want to have to do it. And I was so defiant in my heart. I was like, okay, fine. You can do it, but I'm not going to do it. And then it was totally God because that night Colby Jr. had a fever and he didn't sleep a lot of the night. Oh yeah, so anyways, Colby gave me all these benefits about why ice baths are so awesome. So, ice baths, and remind, just to remind you guys, I live in Scotland. Scotland is colder than London, and he put the ice bath outside. So, when you come out of the water, you're even more freezing, right? And so, he gave all these benefits. It gives you more energy. It releases endorphins. It reduces anxiety. Uh, because, basically, the stress that you put your body through allows you to relax in the face of adversity. Wow. It really helps you to grow. Anyways, I told him I'm not going to do that. Colby didn't sleep. Colby Jr. I didn't sleep that night. And I woke up the next morning after a few hours of sleep, and I was so tired. And I wanted to be like, I'm so tired from last night. <laughs> and I decided not to say that because I knew exactly what Colby would say. You know what helps being tired, right? <laughs> and I just made a decision. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Oh I'm just going to do the ice bath. <laughs> And you know what? An ice bath is not a physical challenge. It's not physically hard to like sit down in a bucket of water, in a bath of water. It's a mental challenge. And after I came out that first time, I was like, wow, I'm an overcomer. I overcame. Like. And after that, I kept doing the ice baths. Because I decided, you know what? This is an opportunity to crucify my comfort. Instead of being defiant to my husband, I'm going to defy my comfort. And facing these physical discomforts expand to emotional and spiritual discomforts. And I don't ever feel like doing it. I don't ever feel like doing the ice bath. But every day as I'm on my way home from the gym, I just pray, God, please give me the strength to do this ice bath. I really don't feel like doing it, but I know I need to do it to crucify my comfort. Now, I'm not telling you guys that you need to go out, buy ice baths, and ice bath every day. But what I am telling you to do is that all of us, um, all of us have something that we need to conquer, right? Mountains, obstacles. I just want to challenge you, ladies. Imitate your leader. If you're married, it's your husband. If you're not married, it's your women's ministry leader because they're probably pushing themselves to be greater, right? That's what this whole conference is about. And you don't have to do it to the max, like even as many times as them. Like I just do it a few times a week. I don't do it as Colby does every day. I do it a few times a week, but it's expanding and growing my faith. I'm just going to close out with a final quote that I felt like really gave me faith. It says, good character is not formed in a week or a month. It is created little by little, day by day. Protracted and patient effort is needed to develop good character, or in our case, excellent character. So sisters, let's go go after having excellent character. You will feel rejuvenated, revived, and alive. Love you. (laughs)